brand up. You don't want to get into Amazon for the short term. You don't just want to launch a product that you think is going to sell for the next few months. You don't want to launch anything trending. A lot of people get excited and they want to sell it on Amazon, but as fast as it went up, it's going to come down. They're just trending, you know, little gimmicks that are going to go away. So what we do is we, we find one product that we know is going to do very well. And then we start building a brand out of it. Brand up. What's up, podcast listeners? First of all, I want to say thank you for listening to the show and also let you know that I have some exciting news that I don't want you to miss. I'm thrilled to introduce the Brand Up Pod Letter, which is technically my podcast and newsletter all in one. And you can sign up completely for free at www.thebrandupshow.com. And by subscribing to the Pod Letter, it actually sounds pretty cool. Pod Letter. <laughs> You'll be the first to know when a new episode of the Brand Up Podcast is released. You'll also get exclusive access to all my upcoming guests, behind the scenes in my own business, live Q&A, plus a free brand up training, which will walk you through exactly how to start building your own personal brand online while you generate customers for your own business in a predictable and efficient manner. So I hope to see you in your inbox, www.thebrandupshow.com. Brand up. So, brother, first of all, I want to say thanks for taking the time to be on the show today. I want, we'll dive into your story in just a second, but I want to say I'm actually super proud to have you on the show because this is the first episode that we dive into e-commerce and more into the product side, the product branding side of things. You know, the, the show, it's mostly kind of focused towards the service-based uh, entrepreneurial crowd, but we did have a lot of people asking uh, questions about this uh, this e-commerce side of things. So I'm actually pumped to have you on the show. Yeah, thank you. That's exciting to hear that you haven't had any anybody talk about this before. So no. yeah, looking forward to to sharing what's helped me and what, you know, got me to where I am today. And hopefully everyone listening can start using the information right away as well. 100%, man. So let's dive a little bit into the story and you can go as far back as you'd like, especially like before you guys actually started teaching. Like I want to pull the curtain and, and see, because of course we all kind of look at the highlight reel of someone, you know, someone's success, but maybe people are not aware of how did you guys start it? Maybe how many products have failed before one was really successful. You know, maybe you've had a couple back and forth. And again, e-commerce is not really my expertise at all. So I'll try, you know, some of the questions might be even beginner level for you, but a lot of the audience will probably look at this uh, from the same lens. So let's go back and pull the curtain from how did you get started into the whole e-commerce and, and Amazon FBA industry? Yeah, brother. So um, what I'll do is I won't pull it back to, you know, getting deep into my story and my struggles and things like that. So we can have more time to focus on actually explaining, you know, the process and uh, providing value on Amazon FBA. So mm -hmm. just to take it a little bit back, um, when I, you know, first started this entire process, what initially got me into this was meeting a guy at the gym who I didn't know, but I followed on Instagram. And this was at a point in my life where I was in the worst position I could possibly ever been in. I was completely addicted to drugs, um, like, using daily i had just got fired from every single job i ever had i also just got kicked out of the u.s air force so i was in the air force oh, wow. for three and a half years and you only have you know i had a four-year contract and i got kicked out six months before my contract ended so you know i had a discharge from them i also decided to drop out of college so from you know looking at where i was i was i think 24 years old and in my you know, in my opinion, I had failed at everything, school, work, um, relationships, everything I had, you know, tried, I completely failed and I got fired and I was in the worst position. And there was this guy that I knew that uh, went to the local gym and he had a Lamborghini and he was around my age. And it just completely caught my interest to like the next level of like, damn, this isn't just something you see on Instagram. This isn't just that YouTuber that's a guru. This is a real guy that's like my age that has a Lamborghini and he goes to my gym. So that initially piqued my interest, but I didn't end up, you know, getting too into it or learning about it or even hitting him up because I was still stuck in that environment. So 
that's initially how I learned about um, Amazon FBA. And what ended up happening is all those things that were going on in my life um, set me back a lot. And I had to figure out how I can change my habits and how I can change myself to be able to pursue something like Amazon FBA. So on my own, I decided to move back to my parents' house. So I was back in my parents' house at this point, um, almost 25 years old now, and had absolutely nothing to my name. I even totaled my car, just to add on to that. So I had nothing to my name. And one day while I'm, you know, I'm going back to the gym, I'm starting to read books, I'm trying to better myself. And one day this guy posts on Instagram that he's taking six new people to personally teach how to build an Amazon business and not just teach you, but do it with you. And he said, if you're interested, book a call. It's not going to be cheap. So I book a call with him and on the call, he tells me it's $10,000 to, to learn Amazon FBA, which was crazy at that point in time. I was like, how, you know, $10,000 just to learn the business model. Um, but long story short, I ended up using the money I had left over from what I used to do in the past. I borrowed some money. Somehow I got it together and I paid him. And that started off initially my Amazon FBA journey. And um, I since then, I have never actually worked a job. I've never um, went back to that point of time, you know, that life that I had. My life completely turned around since that point of time. But there was a lot of time between then and you know succeeding on amazon gotcha and then for people that might even not be familiar with um uh, what fba means it's fulfilled by amazon meaning you source the products from different countries and then amazon holds them in their own warehouse right yes yes fulfilled by amazon so it's a lot simpler than people think and the funny thing is um, over 55% of Amazon sellers are, you know, things that you buy on Amazon. There's a very high chance that things that you've bought could be for people like me, third party sellers. And these are people like you and I who are at home on their laptop. They don't have a huge company. They don't have a warehouse. They don't have a team. It's just one person, a guy or a girl on their laptop. And they're selling these things on Amazon. And most of the things on Amazon are products like that, that everyone is buying. Um, but unless you kind of learn about it, you don't know that you think you're buying, you know, a, a car, a car seat for your baby. And you think you're buying it from a big company, but you're not, it's somebody at home like me. And that's exactly what we do. And what's cool is you don't have to have a store. You don't have to have a warehouse, all the things that I just said, you use Amazon and people trust Amazon and love Amazon and purchase their products. hundred percent. And so from, you know, you bought the coaching package from that guy and then you guys started, uh, was it just yourself at that point or it was you and, and your spouse? I hadn't met my partner yet. So okay. my girlfriend. So I did have uh, one of my good guy friends who also was in a similar position as me and trying to somehow, you know, get to the next level in his life and kind of break free from having to work for work for a company and go to school and things like that. So he actually is the one that helped me pay for that initial um, coaching business. So once I learned everything, now the, the problem was we needed money for inventory. So everyone listening, um, not only do you need to learn how to sell on Amazon, which, you know, it doesn't cost that much money anymore. You don't need to pay somebody $10,000 at all, but you do have to learn. And the best way is from somebody who's an expert. But aside from that, you do need money for inventory. and a lot of times this makes people run away because they're like oh wait i have to buy inventory like i, I don't want to do that i want to do that drop shipping stuff where it's there's no cost you just list stuff on a website and you start selling it if you're listening and you're into that that's a very basic beginner way to get into e-commerce it's like preschool of e-commerce everyone graduates and gets to the next level um, drop shipping is just like a stepping stone to learn e-commerce. So yeah, it's, it's easy to get into that, but there's not really a, a, a place to scale it to the level you can at Amazon. So you do have to buy inventory for this and you do need some funds. So we had to find a way to make money. And this is kind of when my life started to change. I started to drive for Uber and I was driving for Uber using a car. I was renting from them so I can actually save money for my initial inventory. So. I say that because a lot of times people will message us and tell us, hey, I don't have money for inventory. Um, what can I do? Or can I, you know, can you lower the cost of your program? Or is there a cheaper way to start? And, you know, 
the, the answer is always going to be just go make the money. Because if you looked at where I was, I got fired from every job. I was addicted to drugs. I dropped out of college. I was failing at everything. But when I made a decision that, hey, I'm going to sell on Amazon and I need three, four thousand dollars, I found a way to do it. And that was driving for Uber. So find a way to make some money and use that to actually start your business, which can completely change your life. That's that's exactly what I did. No, I mean, at the end of the day, you know, it comes down to mindset and as everything else, like regardless if you're investing in real estate, regardless, regardless if you plan to, you know, launch a podcast, launch a brand, whatever that thing may be, it will require some type of income. So it doesn't really matter where the money is coming from. Well, to a certain extent, obviously, <laughs> but, <laughs> but you will need some type of income to, to uh, make it happen. I mean, if you think about it, you know, if you plan to go to college, gonna have to pay a big chunk of money every year uh and and then you don't know what's happening but that's for a whole different uh discussion all right so let's talk about now finding the product because at the end of the day and actually before even would um get to that because you you touched uh upon the the whole drop shipping part what i don't like from a consumer standpoint when i order something on amazon i want it like now like i want it tonight or tomorrow <laughs> like depending yeah. what time you're ordering right and that's just not doable with drop shipping uh, at least not that i know yeah, no. um no. and uh, especially you know during covid this whole uh time that it took to uh to get your stuff uh it was even longer but anyway so let's talk about product before we even talk about finding the manufacturers and and finding people to that you can get the products from the product research phase and and maybe a process that people can start kind of look into it and even have an idea like for example how do you even pick a product do you look at what the market wants at this current time do you look at trends do you look at the fact hey maybe like i have a dog do i look at uh pet uh, products because it's my passion quote unquote right? like i'm talking about the, the every yeah. point that the audience wants or I'm also thinking, all right, if I'm a podcaster, can I come up with some type of product that can also complement? I'm always trying to think outside the box, right? Um, can I find a product, like for example, uh, if you, I don't know if you're probably familiar with Pat Flynn, they did this um, tripod. Now they completely manufacture it themselves and then they outsource it uh, from, from China, if I'm not wrong. But bottom line is, can I find a product that can actually complement what I'm doing in my personal brand if I'm already a, a business owner if I'm already doing some type of coaching things like that right like how do you look at that process yeah that's that's really good uh before I forget there's actually a really good product I saw a couple months ago that's still a great product that has to do with the podcast niche do you know those sound uh soundproof like panels you would put in the yeah, back are those that right there yeah yeah, yeah. So well, those are just for design purposes. It's actually okay. for, for a different angle of a camera, but yeah. Yeah. So those make a ton of money on Amazon. Sellers that are selling those are making over $55,000 in a month on average. So yeah. that means if you take 50 people who are selling that on Amazon, on average, they're making about $55,000 in a month in revenue. Um, typically, I would say we make about 25% in profit. Um, the more experience you have, the better products you'll choose and that will go up. Like my profit margins range between 30 to 40%. So if you take that 50K, 25% of it per month in profit is a lot of money selling some soundproof panels that go on the wall. But it's no matter what niche you're in, no matter you know what market you're in there are products that not only do you use but everyone you know in the niche uses and hey why not be one of the people that sells it to all those people right no 100 percent. and now that you say this actually this product makes a lot of sense or oh, the one behind me it's not super soundproofing but um it makes a lot of sense because it's not really breakable it's, it doesn't take yeah. a lot of time. It doesn't. Have, it doesn't take a lot of space. Warehouse yeah. wise, it's a lot. So, how do you look at those things? Like, 
you know, yeah. do you not go into electronics? Do you not go into glass made products? Yeah, so when you're first starting, uh, one thing you want to do, you want to make sure you don't do, and I'll share, um, you know, one of my failures with Amazon FBA. One thing you don't want to do is just focus on what your passion is. With Amazon FBA, the really good thing is that we use data to see the potential before you get into it. So before you spend any time, any money talking to any suppliers, there are softwares that we use and I actually have one that my partner and I, we customized it specifically for beginners. So if you're completely new and you have like no idea how to use any softwares or anything that has to do with Amazon, we customized our own that's specifically for beginners where you can go find these products. And what you do is, like I said, you don't want to focus on, for example, if you're into fitness, only looking for fitness products because you're making yourself very, very, you know, you're, you're, narrowing down your possibilities of finding a product to just that one niche and now you're so focused on it has to be a fitness product and you might come across 20 other great products and other niches that you just scroll past because you have to have that fitness product but the thing is when you're selling on amazon you're not trying to sell things that you like or that you absolutely love and you can't wait to tell your mom about you're selling things that make a shit ton of money and that's all we care about for example I sold makeup on Amazon. I don't anymore. Um, there was a lot of reasons for that, but I sold makeup. I've never used makeup in my life. I had no idea how, you know, the makeup was created or anything like that, but I designed my own makeup line, not just one product, but a makeup line on Amazon. And that made me the most amount of money that I've ever made in a month. Um, and when I first started selling on Amazon and it was makeup and no one knew that there was a guy, a 25 year old guy in San Jose, California that made it. They thought it was some big company in, you know, New York, but no, it was me. <laughs> so I love how, uh, how that example plays out. So when you start these uh, Amazon stores, what do you think long term? So, for example, um, recently, uh, me and my brother, we actually bought um, it's uh, I brought in the, the pet industry. We bought an Amazon store from a guy that has been running it for about two years or so, right? But the reason that I bought it is this. They didn't have a funnel on the back end outside of Amazon. So that's what I come in. Like I, I come in and say, all right, if we are selling these um, pet uh, like leashes and, and things like that, now I'm going to come in on the back end and create a podcast where I'm going to interview uh, dog trainers. Maybe I do an affiliate program with them. And then when they sell uh, uh, dog trainings, I'm going to get a commission. Then I do, you know, the back. And then the end goal is in three or two or three years to put together this brand and actually uh, flip it and sell it. Do you think of that model for your students or you plan more for, all right, let's get this thing making someone 10K a month uh, in profit or above or whatever the, the income level of the person that's starting wanting to do full time? Or how do you position these things, uh, these stores when you uh, when you work with your students? That's that's actually exactly what we do, because you don't want to get into Amazon for the short term. You don't just want to launch a product that you think is going to sell for the next few months. You don't want to launch anything trending. Um, a lot of TikTok products that are hyped up, you know, they get 10 million views on a TikTok. A lot of people get excited and they want to sell it on Amazon. But as fast as it went up, it's going to come down. They're just trending, you know, little gimmicks that are going to go away. You want to sell products that five years from now are people going to buy those products if they are that means you have a real business that's sustainable it's long term so what we do is we, we find one product that we know is going to do very well and then we start building a brand out of it so like you said if it's in the pet niche let's say you have a pet bag after that maybe you'll make some pet bowls after that another pet product another pet product eventually you have four or five products and you have an entire line that you're selling on amazon which you know, makes you look more legit. You can have a whole storefront and overall it'll just keep increasing the amount of sales you're going to make, the amount of referrals you're going to get from people who bought it and they tell their friends about it. And it just keeps adding up to you making more and more and more money. Um, one thing you don't want to do is when you get started, start selling a pet product and then get excited and start selling a baby product. <laughs> now you have two brands that you're trying to grow at the same time. Not a good idea. So 
focusing on one brand. That's what we tell our students to do. And after you're happy with it, let's say you have three products, it's making fifty, sixty thousand dollars in a month or more. Now, okay, go ahead and start working on your second brand, start building that up, and then move on to the next one. That's that's exactly what I did, and that's exactly what my partner did. And um, it's the best way to have like a long term business on Amazon. Love it. So what do you think are the levels um, when it comes to what, what kind of realistic goals should should, should, should bah, <laughs> sit, make sure you cut this. <laughs> um, what are some realistic goals that someone should look at and say, all right, I want to make sure that I can do this amount of sales for the next 30, 60, 90 days, six months down the road. And then at what point do you know, all right, now the store is breaking even in terms of how much money sh you, and, and of course, things could be different for any store uh, in particular, depending how much you're selling it for and things like that. But do you have a plan? Like, for example, when I work with some of my um, customers, I always tell them, depending on like, all right, if you are already hitting six figure months, or you're not now let's make a goal let's say you're making 50k a month let's make a goal on what's the actual plan to hit 75k so like a 25 increase 25 percent ish uh increase for uh for that how do you look at those levels when it comes to income yeah. for these stores the best way the best way to do it is to see the market cap so you can see for example if you're selling a product and let's say you're selling um on average let's say you're making twenty five thousand dollars in a month selling that product gross and you right? see that Gro gross yeah gross, numbers. gross okay. revenue and then you see that the best seller for that product that means the best seller in the entire amazon website they're making let's say thirty five thousand. that means if you reach and become the best seller of the product, you're probably not gonna pass 35K. There's a very good chance that that's like the cap for that product. Of course, you know, things can happen, holidays, whatever. Um, you might go a little bit above, but if the best seller is making 35,000 roughly every month, you're not gonna magically start doing 70K for that product. That's the max that you're probably gonna do. So you can calculate that and, you know, aim to become the best seller and make sure you keep improving your product. You keep um, seeing the reviews that your customers are leaving. So for your next shipment, you can improve the product even more, um, add on to it, make it better, highlight the features that you've improved upon and aim to become the best seller, let's say, or Amazon's choice and have one of the highest revenues. Um, then, you know, if your goal is to make a hundred thousand in revenue per month, um, you can't expect to do that one product then you have your second product figure out you know what's the max you're probably going to do with that product and use that to kind of calculate how many products are you going to need to reach that 100k per month in revenue if if that's your goal and if you're wondering you know um that sounds like a big number like how much are you actually making again if you're making about 25 percent profit um, that means you would make about twenty five thousand dollars in a month in profit that you keep and you take home every month from selling those products on amazon Love it. So when you say you do your uh, research, like competition um, research, and you look at based on the tool that you have, uh, you can look at exactly yeah. what's the amount of sales, because otherwise, you know, a regular person that would just go now on Amazon wouldn't be able to see those numbers, correct? Yeah. The cool thing is, so there's there's different softwares out there. Like I said, we have our own customized. And what you can do is you don't have to even think of products. You don't have to sit there and kind of think like, what should I sell on Amazon? No, you just select a couple different categories. Remember, don't be focused on one. Pick a few different categories. Let's say you pick the baby category, the pet category, and the fitness category. Then there's going to be an option to put in some filters. Like, what do you want? These products that I'm going to show you, imagine the software is talking to you, right? So the products I'm about to show you that are in those three categories, what do you want them to look like as far as the numbers? Then you plug in some numbers and we like to put, for example, minimum revenue of 10,000 per month. That means once you enter that, all the products that the software is going to show you, they're going to make a minimum of $10,000 in revenue per month. And if you have bigger goals, of course, you can raise that number a little bit. And it'll tell you how many sales per month should these products be making? How many competitors should there be? How many reviews should there be? All the things that we need to really you know, look at as far as data, we can enter our own filters of how we want it to look and press enter. And it'll populate all the products that are right now on Amazon 
that are meeting all the criteria that you just entered. So that way you can look through a list of mostly qualified products mm -hmm. and look through them and then dig a little deeper. And that's how you find a winning product to sell on Amazon. And like I said, the good thing is you're not really guessing with this. You're not really, you know, a lot of times if you're new to business, you have this great idea and you think it might work out, but it's just based on that instinct and that feeling that you have that this might be a hit. Mm -hmm. Well, with Amazon, you don't even have to have that feeling. You don't have to guess. You don't have to feel that anxiety of like, well, what if it doesn't work? Because the data tells you right there, like, hey, this product makes 40K in a month on average. That's the average of all the sellers. So if you start selling it, there is a good good chance that you can reach that average number and even outdo them because you also see all the other details about the product to make it better. And you can filter that by the last six months last year, right? Because if you want to see yeah. someone that's making, you know, let's say 25K a month, you don't want to see that it was making that last year, but now maybe it dipped. You want to see the last yeah. six months to a year or whatever. Gotcha. Yeah, and another thing that um, I think everybody should really, really, really note down if you're listening to this is, I mentioned it a few times, but do not launch products that you just simply like yourself. One of the biggest mistakes that we see a lot of new sellers make is no matter what anyone says, any coach says, you know, all the YouTube videos say, they personally feel that, hey, this product is gonna be a hit. And I understand the feeling because one of the products that I launched on Amazon, this was before I actually had uh, a mentorship. I kind of tried it on my own one time and I launched these fitness bands. And you've all seen them. If you go to the gym, girls use those like glue bands to do kickbacks and different, you know, booty workouts, right? So I created a whole brand that was focused on building your booty for the girls. And it was a bunch of different bands. and. If I had the right mentorship, that product would have done amazing on Amazon, but I had no mentorship. I had no idea what I was doing and I tried to sell it on Amazon and I didn't do the proper research. I didn't list it the right way and the product completely flopped. And I was so focused on just selling that one thing because I went to the gym every day and I thought, you know, because I like it, everyone's going to like the way I make it. Everyone's going to like the way I describe it. It, they're not you have to actually find out what people are looking for and use certain words in your listing that way let's say you go to the gym every day and you're looking for a um a, a gym backpack right maybe you specifically are looking for a gym backpack maybe a lot of other guys that go to the gym they're all looking for a gym duffel bag it might be the same thing. It might lead to the same product. But what if 90% of people are looking for a gym Searches. duffel bag and then only a few people are looking for a gym backpack and you decide to write that as your title? Well, not a lot of people are going to find your product now. So that's why it's important. Do the research and see what are people looking for? What are the customers asking for? And put all that on your listing and that's how you'll make the best listing and maximize your sales. Yeah, so that that actually brings me to the next question. So you find the product, and actually, before even we dive into traffic, how much thought and effort you put into branding of that product? A hundred percent of your effort in this year, especially, has to go to branding. Um, I would say all my products so far that I've launched, um, they're all doing very well. One main aspect of that is my branding completely beats the competitors. And it can be the exact same product. Like for example, take this, um, take this product, for example, let's say this exact supplier for this product, I find it, I have another one right here from the same supplier. They're the exact same thing. If I just put a logo and I create a packaging, a box that's packaged and designed for this and I make it look better, I can probably make a lot more money than the guy who just sells it like this on Amazon because I have a box that looks nice and I have a brand name and, you know, I make my listing look nicer. So branding is key on Amazon this year, especially in the past. You could have got away with just like, you know, launching things that they're in demand. But now there's a lot of people launching things that are in demand. So you have to stand out. You have to make sure your branding stands out. It tells a story. It looks nice. It's appealing. Um, all those things. And one way I, I tell my members to, you know, get other people's opinion is it all comes back to the same thing. Although you might think your brand looks nice, although you might think your logo is attractive, what if nobody else does? So find 10 people, find your 10 closest friends and just send them your logo. That's what I do. I'm like, hey, I'm making a new brand. This is the logo. What do you think? Tell me the truth. 
And if they're like, hey, I don't really think that looks that cool, maybe I should change it, right? So always get other people's opinion when you're um, making that decision to make your brand. No, I totally agree uh, with that. And now just my thought of thinking outside the box. So how much are you allowed on Amazon to say, let's say you create, because you just said uh, you create a nice um, box for this microphone. How much are you allowed to say on that box or in the listing? Let's say you want to create a, an incredible offer for this mic and you say, hey, if you buy this product or whatever, you have to word it in a different way, but um, you buy this product here, you buy this microphone here, you also get access to this free podcasting um, introductory course, which is valued yeah. at 197. Are you allowed things like that on the Amazon? Yes. Yeah, that's really cool. That's a, that's a great way to differentiate. I did have somebody actually do that in the past where um, they launched a baby product that helps babies go to sleep. And what they did is on their packaging and on their insert card, which is like a little card that goes in your box, yeah. it kind of like says thank you, right? So on their insert card, they created a QR code that when scanned, it takes you directly to Spotify and plays a baby lullaby playlist. Spotify playlist. And Smart. that was amazing to see because a lot of people don't think outside the box that way. But, you know, imagine you get that. You're going to tell all your friends, hey, <laughs> I bought this on Amazon and it literally comes with like a baby lullaby playlist. You just get it. And now all their friends are going to tell their friends. And if they have babies, you just made a bunch of more sales. 100%. All right. So let's dive into traffic because we all know, I mean, the product can be the best in the world, but if people can't find it, it's the same as with services. I mean, you can be the best. Yeah author, uh, podcasters, speak, whatever you're selling, but if people are not finding it, I'm assuming it applies uh, in here as well. How much thought and effort you put into organic ranking on uh, Amazon FBA? Because at this point, we're only talking about Amazon. We haven't even touched. That's probably, we probably have to do a part two uh, at some point <laughs> for going outside of Amazon versus Amazon ads versus are you running uh, outside traffic directly to the Amazon store or you're using a bridge page, right? So let's yeah. dive slowly into these two organic traffic versus paid traffic and how do you structure, especially at launch, right? Like how do you structure these two? Yeah. So as always, almost with every niche that even if it wasn't Amazon, um, if you can do organic marketing, of course, do it because it's free and you can make a lot of sales without spending money on ads. But it's the same thing just with other markets it's great to combine the two because you can maximize your sales you can get all the organic marketing that you could possibly do you can also get a bunch of sales from ads and that way the combination will boost your listing to get closer to page one so what's really important on amazon if all of you guys just take a second and think about it if you're about to buy something on amazon you type it in you're going to click search and you're going to find one of the products on the first page and you're going to buy it you almost never ever will go to page two. Sometimes some people will, but over 80% of sales or 90% of sales are done on page one. And that's where you want to have your product. Now, the problem becomes if you just launched your product, you have no sales, you have no reviews, nobody knows who you are. How the heck are you gonna get to page one? It's not that easy and a lot of people a lot of people that actually don't succeed with Amazon, it's mostly due to they just don't get their product in front of people's eyes. They didn't get it to page one. So the two ways you want to do it is number one, you want to find those words. Again, remember the keywords we mentioned earlier that people are looking for. So you can use the software, the same one I mentioned earlier that we customize or any software that you have and actually go find those keywords that people are looking for. For example, one way to do it is you can grab your competitors uh, the ones that are on page one, the ones that are already doing well, right? You're trying to beat them or be like them. You can actually grab their ASINs, which is like their barcode, and you can plug it into the software and it'll actually show you all the keywords that they're making sales on. So mm. take the, the, let's take the Jim Duffelback, for example. You can just grab their barcodes, drop it in the software, and it'll show you the Jim Duffelback and all the other words that people are already looking for in order to buy their products. And you can take that list and of course there's some steps that you have to take but you can narrow it down to the top words that you want to have in your listing then you put those in your title and you put them in your bullet points and now when customers go on amazon and they search for your product there's a high chance that your product pops up 
Now, if you're not on page one, your product still might pop up, but like on page three and four, that's where the ads come in. So Amazon has their own ad platform, which is PPC. It's pay-per-click. So in order to set that up, you would also, again, think about those top keywords that you specifically want to rank for, and you would run ads for those keywords. So if somebody goes to Amazon and searches for a gym duffel bag, and you want them to see your product, you would actually place a bid for that keyword. And now you'll pop up on the top of page one and your product will be right there. And now you'll rack up those sales. And if you make a lot of sales, you'll actually get pushed to page one. The only thing Amazon cares about to put their products on page one is how many sales are you making? There's really nothing else. You can even have bad reviews. You can have three stars out of five and be on page one if you make a lot of sales still somehow. So that's the only thing that matters. And you have to figure out all the different ways you can make as many sales as you can in that beginning and the first you know few weeks of launch to get your product on page one. And once it's there, it does mostly become automated. Once it's there, it's like the hard work is mostly done now. Now, uh, you said you have a much higher chance to be on page one as long as you uh, rack up a bunch of sales. Does the time frame matters? Like a bunch of sales every day? Do you need a bunch of sales in a week? Do you need to surpass your number, I don't know, two or three competitor? Because you're probably not going to outrank directly your number one competitor because that person, if, if it's yeah. been there for like two years, you're not going to just magically have, you know, millions of dollars of sales. Um, but is there a little bit of a formula that you're looking at? Like, all right, our goal is to at least be on uh, page one, but be in the top 10 maybe listings and try to outrank number 10, nine, eight, or seven at first, right? Or how do you kind of look at these, the strategy? Yeah, well, the way me and my partner and Jackie do it, we actually get really competitive with it. Um, there are several ways to figure out, you know, how you're going to get your product to page one and, you know, even what part of page one on the lower part, on the middle, on the top. And again, all that matters is how many sales, but if you're wondering, okay, well, how do you actually know how many sales to make? Again, you can use the software. The software will actually tell you. It'll show you, hey, all these sellers that are on page one, they're making this many sales per day. And in a week, for example, they're making this many sales. All you have to do is calculate if in a week, let's say they're making 15 sales per day. And in a week that adds up to a certain amount. All you have to do is match that number and there's a very good chance you'll be right there next to them. So in order to beat some of the competitors, if they're making 15 sales a day and you come out of nowhere making 20 sales a day, there's a good chance you're going to beat them. So what okay. we do, it's it's kind of fun for us. We pick one of the competitors that that we think we look most like are we're trying to really outdo them. Maybe they're Amazon's choice or something um, or whoever, you know, was our inspiration on page one that we're like, hey, they did a great job. We want to beat them. Um, not everyone does this, but we think it's fun to kind of look at what they're doing, how many sales they're making. And it's our goal, like we're going to beat that listing and outdo them. And a lot of times that's exactly what has happened. And we became a couple positions before them on page one and became Amazon's choice after the first few weeks, making those sales, getting reviews. And now our, our product is Amazon's choice and it's stacking up sales after that. Love that. So uh, relating back to relating this process back to um, the bestseller book launch, like I've done a few uh, Amazon bestseller books uh, launches, and I've noticed every hour they update their results. So, you know, you can be a bestseller uh, in US, let's say you can be a bestseller in Canada, or whatever, and then there are categories and subcategories and, and all that, right? Now, for e-commerce, does that apply in terms of which categories you decide? Like, is it fitness and then it's fitness uh, or whatever? Like in fitness, you got bodybuilding and then now you have male and female products. And then you have like, yeah. is this is this a thing in there too? Yeah, you're on the right right track with that. So there, there are different um, categories that you can list your product in. And you could become, for example, Amazon's choice for your product for a specific keyword that might be in a specific category and then somebody else selling the same exact product they might also be amazon's choice but for a different keyword and maybe they you know enter their listing in a different category but 
Um, either way, if you see that those keywords have a lot of demand, they're making a lot of sales per month with those keywords and you become one of the best sellers or, you know, you get to page one for those keywords, there's a very high chance that your product is going to do very, very well. Um, very low chance that you do all this right, you get to page one, you get those sales, you get the reviews, and then for some reason your product flops. That's very, very unlikely. So, you know, there is that initial work to do, but the good thing is, and now that I know you're selling or you have experience with it, once your products do get there and you do get those reviews and they're kind of established on page one, you can move on to the whole process again for your second product. And that kind of becomes automated. So hmm. I know oftentimes we hear people say, you know, it's not passive income. Anyone saying Amazon FBA is passive income, they don't know what they're talking about. They're not educated. Passive income is where you can do absolutely nothing. You can be sleeping and you're making money. <laughs> well, right now it's 8.45 AM. And if I look at my Amazon sales, I probably made four or $5,000 in sales so far. I haven't even opened my Amazon account yet. I was asleep the last, you know, eight, nine hours. I got up, I turned on my laptop, I'm on this podcast now, and I've made four or $5,000 in sales. Is that not passive? I've done nothing for the last eight, nine hours of my life but sleep. That's passive income. And that's what you're gonna get to when you get your product sort of automated and, you know, established on page one. Yeah, I feel like a lot of people have this wrong idea of the whole passive part of the income is like they expect everything to have to be passive from the beginning. Doesn't matter what you sell, like you can have a YouTube channel that's automated. It's not going to be automated from the get go. You can have your own um, podcast to be automated as long as you outsource all the right thing. It's not going to be automated from the beginning. Like it's yeah. it takes time to put in yeah. like real estate. Doesn't matter what you any industry. It, it requires time and effort at first to be able to uh, to get it automated at some point. All right, man. So um, as we're getting close to um, wrapping things up in here, before we dive into what do you suggest people to do, um, outside traffic, third party, do you look at Facebook ads, Instagram ads, or you'd rather stay within the platform uh, within Amazon we, itself? We have had experience with running different types of ads and also um, TikTok. A lot of our our members that we help, um, they're, most of our audience is women and they do very well with you know external marketing and TikTok has been the number one source i would say um, mostly because it's free and there's such a high chance of your product getting a lot of views so if you make TikTok videos with your product it's you know it has to be um you know worthy of like that TikTok audience you can't be selling for example like um a, a pan that's in your kitchen like an egg pan you can't be selling an egg pan and expect to make TikToks with it no one's gonna watch the video but if you have a pretty cool product that could possibly be exciting to watch, then yeah, you post it on TikTok, you have the link to your Amazon store in your TikTok bio, and you get 4 million views overnight. Congratulations, you probably just sold out of your products. <laughs> so that's a really cool way. And of course, Instagram marketing, um, for example, if you have a, a pet product, you can look up all the doc pages on Instagram and just send them a message and say, hey, I would love for you to shout out my product that's on Amazon. They'll put your Amazon link in their bio. You'll pay them 50 bucks, 100 bucks. They'll post your product. You can tell them what to post, what to say. And now their entire audience of, you know, a couple hundred thousand or a million people, they all see your product. And the cool thing is they all love dogs because they're following a dog page. So you got to be a little smart with the type of marketing you do based off of your niche, what you're selling. But yeah, all these different ways, they all do add up and help you make more sales. I would say do them all if you can if you're someone that has no experience you just you know you've never done anything with business and you're not good at social media you don't have to that's the good thing is you can just launch a product on amazon you can just do ppc and you can do very well and that's stuff that you will learn when you start selling on amazon and it's just inside of amazon itself if you're somebody who's more you know experienced or you have good experience with social media go ahead try all the other ways combine them all and you'll do very well 100% man. So what I like to do all the time at the end of these episodes is to give people two tasks. One thing that they can do right at the end of this episode. So let's say, you know, the type of uh, person is listening or watching this and say, all right, I want to at least get familiar with, with the process. What would be the first thing that I should do? 
maybe the one like a quick do, yeah a quick two three ten minute half an hour task that someone can do at the end of this episode yeah if, if you're really interested to to at least learn about what this is before you spend any time or money and before you even go make an amazon account um, the first thing you want to do is kind of hear what the business model is about. So my partner and I do host a free training where we just simply break down the whole business model. So we didn't really get a chance to do that today, but we would break down the business model from A through Z, how it all works, how we get these products, where we buy them from, um, how to make a brand, everything you're wondering about for the process, we explain all of it to you. So. That would be the first step, I would say, because it doesn't require any money. You don't have to pay for anything. You can just come show up, listen to us live and ask us questions, get your questions answered. And then after that, really make a decision if you want to pursue this, because it's not for everyone. This is not something that just anybody can start from anywhere in the world and start making money. Um, yeah, that is a possibility, but you have to want to sell on Amazon. You have to want to build a brand. You have to want to invest the money. You have to know how it all works before you make that decision. And then where do they go if they want to uh, watch this training? Yeah, so the best way would be to contact us on Instagram. That would be the best way. Um, we post a bunch of content, a bunch of value. So it's linked in our bio on Instagram as well. If you're wondering about the software, let's say you just want to see how the software works. You can also try that for free. There's a free three day trial you can mess with. You can go ahead and, you know, take a look at different products, how much they make, get an idea of how it all works all for free. So the software is linked in my bio. Um, the free training that we host is linked in my bio. My Instagram is at sal underscore habibi so that's s-a-l underscore h-a-b-i-b-i go ahead and click on the link in my bio grab the free training grab the free software start checking it out and then again that will really help you make a decision of like hey this looks like it's for me i want to do it Awesome. And then, of course, we'll make sure to uh, link up your IG in the description of this episode. And then um, last question. So, you know, the first quick 30 minutes. How long is the, the training? Um, it was actually, it's going to be like an hour, hour, hour? and 20 minutes because um, we do them live often. And what we want to do is first explain and then answer all the questions we get. And there's always a lot of questions. So we want to make sure that whatever you're wondering, what's on your mind, everything is all clear. That way you really know what it's about. Okay. And then if they want to, let's say, make a plan in their mind for the next three to six months, how would that plan look like for someone wanting to pursue this? So let's say, you know, they take uh, the training with you guys. Um, maybe they jump in uh, or not. In their head, what did, what should they be thinking of? Like, let's say, maybe the, the average person, they're a business owner, pretty much I would say 95% of my audience are already business owners or in the process of becoming um, business owner. So how much time they should alloc allocate every week or maybe every day? Um, at one point in time, they can outsource this. Let's say, you know, someone that wants to maybe invest some of their money, they want to diversify their portfolio, maybe not just in their business, Maybe they have something on the side. How would you put that in perspective for, for someone? Yes, yeah, so there, there's two ways. One way, if you actually decided to pursue this, is um, to get mentorship. And I, I do offer two different types of mentorship. One way is where we would teach you everything. You would learn how to find products, how to build a brand, everything from A to Z. Um, you would be in our community with live Zoom calls and daily guidance. So you can message us every day, get our help. Uh, we really try to make it as like close knit as possible. So you're not just watching some videos and now like scratching your head. You can actually ask us questions every day, get our help. We're right there with you every day. So. That's one way I would say that will take a little bit longer, a little bit more time. That's for the person who, let's say you're a college student or you're just getting into business and you want to learn everything on your own. And you're also maybe a little bit on the lower end with your budget. The other option is we do have a done for you service. 
where this is somebody for business owners. Let's say you do have, you have money aside and you want to invest. You just don't know, you know, how long it's going to take, if you're going to even be able to do this, or let's just say you're not interested to really learn everything yourself, but you do want to have an Amazon store. We do have a done for you service where we find your product for you. We build your listing for you. We do the research for you. We do about 70, 75% of the work for you. 100% of the business is yours. We would think about it as like hiring my team and I to work for you. So we would just be working for you to help you launch a product and then hand it over to you. So you would keep it, you would keep running it in the future. You would add your products on in the future. That's a done for you service. Um, that would be a little bit faster and you would get more of you know, us actually doing it for you. So those are the two options. Either way, it would take about three to four months just due to the nature of Amazon, finding a product and building a brand and ordering from China and shipping it about three to four months. So um, if, you know, that sounds like something you're willing to do, you have three to four months to, um, you know, be patient and build a brand, then it becomes automated, then this is something good for you. 100%. And, um they follow the same steps they contact you guys through ig yeah yeah that's that's the first step we have everyone take because um we don't want anyone to jump into this and just you know throw a couple thousand dollars at it not having any idea what it is so first watch the free training see what it's about if you're really serious and then we can talk about actually getting you mentorship love it if it's one thing that you want to leave the audience with what would that be no matter where you're from, no matter what your circumstances are, no matter how broke you might be, how rich you might be, no matter what the case is, if you actually want to start selling on Amazon and you decide you want to do it, it is possible for you because you can figure out the next few steps to make it happen for yourself. Just like I did, just like my partner did, just like we have members doing every single day. Um, just believe in yourself that you can do it and get the right mentorship. And it's a great business model for people anywhere in the world that really want to have their own business and, you know, have complete freedom of life. Love it, man. Well, again, brother, thank you so much for being on the show today. This was really helpful. And uh, we'll make sure to link up all the resources in the uh, show notes below. And we'll most likely do a part two at some point because I still have a lot of things to ask. But then based on the questions that I uh, that I get from people from this episode, we'll probably schedule another one in a few weeks. Yeah, definitely. Thanks for having me. And hopefully that, that helped everybody that was curious about Amazon FBA. 100% man. Brand up. All right, guys, thanks for tuning in to this episode of the Brand Up Podcast. I hope you found this episode helpful and hopefully you'll implement it because knowledge without action means nothing, as we all know, right? Now, if you're inspired to build an unstoppable brand that conquers sales and implement a predictable client acquisition system, my Brand Up Accelerator program is here to help you do just that. So what we do inside the accelerator, it's a nine-step program process. So first step is, of course, we have to do an assessment and understand exactly where your brand is at. Do you need help with implementing it within your business or you need help with separating your personal brand from your business? I think that's really important. Step number two is we do a little bit of goal setting because we have to understand where, where we are, but then we need to know where we're going to go. Step three is we do a brand development strategy. Number four is the client acquisition plan itself because we need to know how we're going to acquire customers, what is the offer looking like, things like that. Step number five is the content creation and also the platforms that you need to focus. Some people need to focus just on one, some people need to focus on multiple, depending how big the team is, depending you know how many resources they have. Number six is collaborations and possible podcast connections. Number seven is the sales process. Number eight is paid ads, because up until 0.7, we pretty much build the fire. And the paid ads, in my opinion, is literally the gasoline that you pour on top of it. And number nine, we implement and refine because we need to understand what works and do more of that. So if you're ready to take your personal brand and business to the new heights, head over to brandupaccelerator.com to learn more and apply now. Thanks again for listening, guys, and I'll catch you in the next episode.